Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we are asking the question, what are we most looking forward to in this, the year that is 2019, 2019. Nope, don't say 2019. 2019. We've, we've left that behind. 21 nine. It's, you know, it's so fresh. I'm so, so glad to be here experiencing 2019, to be in the middle of it. Hmm. I don't even remember 2018. It is such a distant memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that I I can't even access. I can't even well. I imagine I being in 2018 and, some and things thinking about, about 2019. I remember some things about it, like capping it off with an incredible holiday season. Got yep. to spend it here in Los Angeles. Yeah, first I time ever. Didn't have any. There was no interpersonal conflict between me and my family. For the first time, me neither. Yeah, there was no it arguments was, at all. It, the kids I, seemed grateful for everything that the they presents, got for Christmas. I'll t I'll t I'm talking about my presents. I'll tell you the presents I'm gonna get in, in a little bit. And they were perfect. Like things I didn't know that I wanted, I got. And they weren't only for my benefit, but for the benefit, benefit of society. Well, it's probably like, this is probably a good time to tell and you. And the New Year's Eve party? Yeah. Whoo! I think this is a great time to tell you that it's party. still 2018 when we're recording this and we have not yet experienced any of the holiday festivities. Okay. Uh, but we're basically just trying to make it seem like they went great. Yeah, so in the next Ear Biscuit, I predict that we will record it in the new year and that we will talk about and give each other and you an update on how our 2018 wound down in terms of the holidays and the New Year's, and I, I'm I'm uh, uh, planning to go to Sedona. I'm gonna check out some Sedona. Sedona, you yeah. don't say. Yeah. Sedona say. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to find so, a yeah. pun. And it, By the time this I comes couldn't. out, I will be back from that, and then so the next recording, I'll t I'll tell you all about it and my my gifts that I didn't know would be so amazing and. New Year's Eve and all that jazz. Well, I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> That's right. You're, but you're going on a romantic excursion, yes, right? Yes, I am. The children are being left alone at home to fend for themselves. Uh, you know, ten and fourteen. I feel like that's adequate. I mean, back in the 1800s, are you, are you serious? Yeah, it, back in the 1800s, you could just you you could leave a ten you could leave a four year old alone for months, and they they fended for themselves. And you know, like learn how to hunt. I mean, we uh, we gave uh, we gave Lock access to uh, the car. He looks old enough to drive, and the the grocery store is not too far from the house. He's uh, gonna he's okay. got he's got a credit card. He, um, he's gonna keep them I fed. Was, I did believe you for a little bit. <laughs> you thought I was gonna leave my kids home alone? You were very convincing. Really? I mean, I thought that we ran out. We like expended all of our lies in the previous bit, and I thought no, you were done I've with. I've got that. lies for days. Well, that's true. <laughs> I should no. I should have known the that. kids will be being taken care of uh, by a responsible adult, and uh, but they will not be with me. <laughs> I tell you that right yeah, now. Well, my compromise. My kids are going to be with me, but I'm going to. Um, we're not doing the RV thing, which I don't know if I regret that. I'll let you know. So anyway, we're going to give you an update on everything that happened. But for now, we are absolutely in the 2019 mindset. We've got some things that we've pulled together that we know are happening in the coming year that boy, when I start going through this list, I get, I get excited. You know, I like, I like having little, it, some of it's like l little silly or frivolous things that I can just go ahead and put on my calendar with just like some asterisks. It's like, you know, just a little pop to your life, just a little something to look forward to. It could be a movie, it could be an album, it could be uh, something personal or something professional. We'll get into all that. Yeah, uh, yeah, we will We will get somewhat personal. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of these things are things that you, you're gonna have an opportunity to enjoy yourself uh, if you have access to an internet connection and you're not uh, living under a rock. Uh, you'll be able to enjoy these things as well. Do you wanna go ahead and talk about yeah. some of them? Yeah, let's right get into now? them. Yeah, I think an easy category to start with is movies. I have this, um, let's see, what is this? I have an app called uh, Flickster. I got that app too, and powered, it, powered by Rotten Tomatoes. Not a sponsor, but yeah, it's got, it. You know, it gives, 
it gives all the ratings in there, but it also tells you when new movies are coming out and you can scroll. Sometimes you can scroll like months and months and months in advance and uh, boy did I find a gem in there. Well, first of all, before we get into the specific movies, I know a lot of people have, you know, there, there's, a, there's a not insignificant percentage of people who when you talk about, when you start talking about movies and what you're gonna see and it has been reviewed and you're like, ah, I didn't get great reviews. It's only got a so-and-so on Rotten Tomatoes. And, yeah. then, and then they're like, I, I don't really, I don't really go by that. You, no, oh, you're saying I they, go by it, but there's not an insig- there's an, n- not a small percentage of people who just ignore what Rotten Tomatoes says, as if Rotten Tomatoes is one thing. Rotten Tomatoes is by definition an aggregate score of both critics and then separately fans. And so, and so submitting yourself to it drastically increases your chances of, of seeing a good movie. Feldman, you're upset about this because y- you like to think of yourself as like uh-huh. an opinionated artist. That's why I brought this up. Who doesn't want to, it, it's, it, it's a betting game that you'll win, but what will happen is, yeah, you're an individual well, you know and, why and you, you can like play that something. Game? You know why you can play that game? Because you don't have children, man. If you have children, you can't risk that. You, you also can't, don't you, have taste, just kidding. <laughs> you, you can't <laughs> risk. That's a joke. A big part of your job is I'm taste. I'm just laughing because you're explaining Rotten Tomatoes to people. You, well, oh, oh, well, no, no, uh, no, no. He's laughing because we're explaining I Rotten Tomatoes The reason I am explaining it is because the people who have told me they don't go by Rotten Tomatoes talk to me as if Rotten Tomatoes is just a guy named Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> you know, yeah, if, if like A.O. Scott was the only person, <laughs> shout out to a film critic that I can think of, and it might not even be right. If he was the only one that was on there that, I'm not gonna go by one critic's recommendations, but it's an aggregate. And it's not like, I mean, even though I do also do the same thing with restaurants and Yelp, and then people are like, but yeah, people can beat the system on Yelp. Yes, they can, and it happens occasionally, but as a general rule, if there's a, if there's a large number of reviews, it's a pretty accurate predictor of what kind of experience you're gonna have at a restaurant. There's a reason that these apps exist. Are you, okay. This is not an app, this is not an ad for an app. Flickster or Rotten Tomatoes, it's just, you know, I, I think we're of the same school of thought here that I'm not gonna waste my time if it's not certified right. fresh. So, I, I mean, I didn't provoke the rant. I don't know who you've been talking to. <laughs> Feldman was just looking the other way and we interpreted that as needing a rant fired at him. Yep. Um, rant cannon on. Star Wars Episode X is coming out. Okay. Um, you know, that that'll be, I, I believe that's towards the end of the year. He, here's the thing, I I don't know because I try to know so little because I'm I want to experience it with with no, um, with without being influenced by anything. So, episode nine. But do you like to know at what point in the story it comes? Well, I've seen the other ones. So now, I mean, I don't. All I want to know is what I know from seeing the other ones. Which yeah, I'll, I'll watch them again. What's the Kylo and Ray situation? What are they up to? They making babies yet? I hope they're not related and making babies. Uh, I'll definitely see it. Will Darth Vader come back as a ghost? I'm not, you know, I'm just, it, I enjoy the I enjoy the films. I, you know, had, my kid, my I had kids a tradition are so on board. Of, of taking, uh, like my whole family back in North Carolina when I was at home for Christmas, you know, back when they were coming out every Christmas, you couldn't get away from them. Yeah. Um, I would take everybody to the to the to the movie, but um, I don't know. I just can't say it didn't, that I'm it didn't particularly become special excited for you. about it. I am. I like. I really like the last one. I'm not. I'm not too picky. Um, I'm just. I'm just happy when they're when it's done well. So I'm not going to mention that solo movie. <clears throat> oh, so you're t- take you're extracting solo out of this. You're saying it's like a blip on the radar, and you're. I'm yeah, it. don't even hear it. I'll tell you what I am excited about is. Um, but I'm not watching any, my final point is that I'm not watching or listening, no trailers. If I'm watching another movie and the trailer for Star Wars comes on, I am literally going to close up every orifice. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into like a tornado drill type situation. I just, I, I like, I, it's just, that's what keeps it special for me and my family 
they they'll probably have to see him and they'll get all excited. And I just I like so they don't. We the, still get very excited. They don't about abide it. by the same principle. No, they no, don't. No, spoilers they can't. Res- whatsoever. They can't resist. They can't resist. They get mad at me because um, they want to tell me about it and they get mad because I'm like bye 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 bye. The movie I'm most excited about, but I'm also a little bit uh, apprehensive about. I'm anxious about it. Is Jordan Peele's movie Us, which is his. Uh, you could call it a follow up to get out. It's, you shouldn't. Uh, but here's the thing. It's, it 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 has nothing to do with it, has, it except well, that he's making it, right? It, well, it has what it has to do with it. It is another horror movie that plays into is a commentary on racial issues. Oh, it is? Yeah. And so um so first of all, that's what made Get Out so great, right? I mean everything about Get Out made Get Out great. A, the fact that it was completely unexpected. It's like, what is this guy from a comedic duo suddenly doing making a movie? It would be like one of us making a movie that was good. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> and, uh, speak and, for yourself. And um, all of a sudden. Yeah, and, and you can't recreate that part of it. That unexpected, huge success, $30 million opening weekend, $100 million plus dollars uh, gross is like, that the stand, he sets such a high bar that that's a difficult thing, but it also means he can write his own check at this point. Uh, and, and, and but anyway, the thing that made it great was if you haven't seen it, please. Even if you're a person who's like, I don't like horror movies, I don't like them. I these I don't like that. I don't understand. So spicy. Today. While anyone would want to be like purposely like around that negative energy. Like, why would you submit yourself to something, that kind of thing? Because it just makes me feel triggered and I don't want to watch it. Um, Especially if it's <laughs> highly rated on Rotten Tomato. That guy <laughs> rotten, means if, nothing to me. If Rotten Tomato said that it was good, then my experience is that he's wrong and it's bad. So I'm not going to see it. Um. Sorry, you know, 2019 is a new, it's the new ret. <laughs> even meaner than 2018. And we're um, not even actually in it. <laughs> That's scary. I'm just ramping up for it. Yeah. Go who, see it. It's who, not, you're not gonna get hurt. Who, it's a movie. Who tinkled in your. It's not even smell a vision yet. Cereal. It's not even one of those rides at Disneyland where all of a sudden you get sprinkled with water. That doesn't happen. It's just, you're in a seat. It's a screen. It's just images. Now, will the Twilight- not gonna hurt you. I, I wonder if the Twilight Zone movie, which I don't know if he's directing, he's producing. He's pro- oh. he, he was in. He was producing a number of movies that I th- are coming out this year as well. So he's like, he's got this backlog. They were talking, there was one, maybe it was Us, then it was the Twilight Zone. So I don't know which one comes out well, first. But, but l- so, I, I'm sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. But it was so unexpected, it was so good, it was so legitimately scary, suspenseful, it was well acted, all the performances were great. It can't, us can't be as good, uh, but because the surprise element's gone. It was funny, and. I hope it is, uh, it but it doesn't have to be. This very timely, brilliant commentary on, a, on r- racial issues that, it was a commentary on racism in a way, in, a, in like this fresh, unexpected way that actually sort of highlighted uh, the racism of white people who don't realize that they're racist, right? It was just brilliant Everyone's thing. seen the movie. No, but, let, but what I'm saying but, is, is that, I, let me, I'm just pointing out the fact with it, why it was so brilliant because it wasn't, the, it, it was just so unexpected and so great in so many ways and then he said that he has always wanted to, for a very long period of time, had in his mind a way to explore those kinds of social issues through horror. And that he had a bunch of ideas lined up and Us was the next one that he had lined up. Let me just give you a few details because I want you to get excited about this. Oh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, af- I'm afraid, I'm actually trying to lower the bar and say success is a 75% of Get Out. Uh, it's coming out March 2019. Uh, it centers around two couples, one black and one white. The black couple is played by uh, Winston Duke from, he played uh, M'Baku and Black Panther and Lupita Nyong'o uh, is the, the woman in that couple. And then the white couple is Elizabeth Moss. Oh, and, she is so white. And speaking of white. I don't know. Tim Heidecker. 
Tim Heidecker, he's white too. Tim Heidecker of Tim and Eric. Yeah, he, he plays the plays the boyfriend or husband. I don't know the. I'd forgotten this, and that's amazing. I mean, he took a dramatic turn in a movie that I didn't see that I read about. I can't remember what it's called. But we um, stood in a very tight alley with Tim Heidecker one time, for the Mythical Show. Remember that tight alley? Yeah, that was um. They really slathered on the awkwardness. Yeah, and I, and it, I could barely take it, but I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't crumble. The comedy was the name of uh, Tim's movie, which uh, was ironically titled. And not only that, Duke Nicholson, who's Jack Nicholson's 22-year-old grandson, is making his acting debut in this movie. What? Yeah, Jack Nicholson's grandson, Duke man. Duke Nicholson is a great name. If you can't get excited about this. Sounds like an inventor, like a guy, like a Ron Popeil kind of guy, like, and now another, mm, vegetable cutting device from the mind of Duke Nicholson. He's also an actor. Yeah, well anyway, I am super excited about it. I do realize that, I, and I do agree with you that the chances that it can't, it just can't be. If it was if it was as good as Get Out, it, the argument is this. The argument, of, for those of you who care about this, uh, I've heard this, I heard Michael Rappaport make this argument about why LeBron can never be as good as Jordan. Okay. And that is because Michael Jordan changed the game so significantly that no one else, unless they're like from a different planet, can change the game in the way that Jordan did. So he literally changed everything about the game. Now that all of a sudden people had their own shoe and people had their own brand and he played completely differently. Like he introduced things that seemed otherworldly to the game that LeBron can only add on to. So in a one-on-one -on -one match, sure, maybe LeBron would beat Jordan, who we can't really, we don't know. But he can't, like, so what? I think we do know, but. The this, this stage it was set for Jordan to come and make, for Jordan, I'm talking about another Jordan, I didn't even mean to say that, Jordan Peele to make this movie in a way that he can't replicate the, like you said, the unexpected success. So now it's just like, is it gonna be as good? Uh, so it actually has, it stands a great chance to be a better movie, but even it has to be a twice as good, which is impossible, yeah. right? In order to be cons actually better. I think about the M. Night Shyamalan Sixth Sense being followed up by Unbreakable, which I really like Unbreakable. Um, you know, it was kind of a shame because I really liked it for it to come out after Sixth Sense, which I haven't seen. Well, you're, what, you're joking, right? Hold on, hold on. You haven't seen Sixth Sense? You're joking, that's a joke. I know I know you haven't seen a lot of movies, but you've seen Sixth Sense. Um, I, did, I, I missed that one. You missed that one? I, it was kind of a Blair Witch kind of situation. No, it wasn't. Yeah. What What do you mean by that? I don't know why I didn't see it. I saw Unbreakable though. I tried to catch oh, up by seeing the next one, and I really liked it. Cause You know why I really liked it? Because I hadn't seen Sixth Sense. But Sixth Sense didn't fall so I in think, that weird 80s time where no, you, were, you were in a weird situation and I didn't Again, understand what was happening. I think I was the person you were making fun of. It's like, I, this doesn't seem like a type, this seems like a spooky movie. I don't like those kind of movies. But how did I see it? What year did Sixth Sense come out, like 98? I didn't, anyway, I think the advice is if you haven't seen Get Out, don't see it before seeing 99? us. Watch us first and love it and then go back and watch Get Out second. That's what you need to do. That's it. All right, we're gonna get, I, I, I got another movie uh, that I'm super, super excited about is happening and then we'll move on to some other stuff. Uh, but first we wanna let you know if you didn't already see it that there's a mug on the table that says Ear Biscuits on it. This is the new Ear Biscuits mug it's no longer a jar, now it's a mug. Uh, it has a handle. For those of you who complain about not having something to hold on to other than your loved one. Uh, now, and even if you, if you, especially if you don't have a loved one this 2019 to, to hold on to, well you can hold on to our mug. It feels, it's not as soft as a person, not as warm as a body, but holds, well actually holds less water and you can uh, get a but it's cheaper it's cheaper a, it's cheaper than uh like a subscription to a dating service that and it would potentially find a mate you can get a set of 3 there's this there's the LTAP mug and the brand new good mythical morning official mug um they work 
all three together, they play very well together for the first time. You can pour water or any liquid from one mug to the next and then back. It's a little bit like a magic trick. Go to mythical.store, support entertainment and rep the stuff that you love, especially if it's us. Rep your boys, that, I thought that was your line. Rep your boys. Well, let me tell you about this. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I'm just gonna say this very quickly that uh, at the end of July, the new Tarantino film, um, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood comes out. You just can't ignore this movie because it's got Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie, Al Pacino, the late Burt Reynolds, and. How'd they do that? CGI. No, they shot, they've shot the film before he died. And, drum roll please. Duke Nicholson. Luke Perry. Luke Perry? Sideburns. Wow, we saw him in Mel's Diner right when we came to Hollywood and thought we were. We were meeting with a potential manager. This is like, this is what Hollywood like a is. a Hollywood manager. It's meet me at the, meet me at the Mel's Diner. We can, I can be your manager. And we go in there, we sit down, he's like, hey, I can be your manager. You guys, are, you got some talent. You got some talent, boys. And we look it didn't over like his shoulder. He did not become our manager. So I'm not making fun of, we, we don't have a manager. We don't need one, man. I don't need a manager. Looked over the shoulder and uh, there's Luke Perry. We're like, dang, we're at the wrong table. Yeah, I want Luke Perry to be our manager. Um, I am excited about that. I know Tarantino is a little controversial, uh, but this is supposed to be one of his most Pulp Fiction-like movies what, since yeah, Pulp Fiction. Say. So I, uh, which is potentially. Centered on the cultural backdrop one of the, best of movies the ever. Charles Manson, Tate LaBianca murders. We'll see. Bruce Lee is in the movie. It's also a controversial. How is Bruce Lee not, I mean, someone's playing Bruce Lee in the movie. Yeah, why not? Uh, <laughs> it's controversial because it centers around the Manson murders. Uh, and people, and some of the family members are saying right. that you can't make a movie about that, which I don't. Oh, who knows what I mean, he's I don't gonna, Who knows what he's gonna do, but it's hard to ignore. I know, you know. I guess I don't understand. We make movies about historical murders all the time. Um, we should mention, I mean, we should mention It, chapter two comes out. I wanna mention it, yeah. I'm excited, It was my other. And it, then I've got one more. Actually, It and Get Out were two of my favorite movies of uh, 2018 and uh, watched both, like Locke and I have kind of become horror movie buddies and we went to see It and Get Out together. Mm -hmm. And uh, Again, the ba the balance of horror with comedy. The it way, was brilliant. The way that they. And, I thought it was and brilliant. And I know a lot of people said that they weren't scared by Pennywise. Uh, again, I don't, I don't understand. It you was great. Check your pulse, man. But uh, I thought it was great and, I, and, I, and it was, as we've already discussed on the podcast, not even comparable to the original. The original sucked compared to the new one. Don't even get me started on that and let me do, let me give you a couple of uh, let me give you a couple of tidbits. Now, first of all, uh, in the book, in the uh, in the book, it written by Stephen King, uh, they kind of go between the original, um, you know, the, the band of kids, 19, kids. 1989 when they were kids, and then uh, twenty is it twenty seven years later in twenty sixteen is when it well in the book it was there was 26 years or 27 years between the two time periods and whatever when he wrote it. But anyway, it's, it's the modern day 2016 is when it's supposed to take place, but they're going back and kind of accessing memories. And so you're seeing the kids from the original movie, but then all the kids grown up, played by James McAvoy. Well, hold on, you just said that, yeah, in, you kind of miss the two in the in the book. Oh, so that's it's presented as a flashback. So they're doing that but in, in the this, movie. In the second it movie. was just presented as kids, and then at the end, there's kind of like, okay, now they're going to get older, and so now we know yeah. that in this second movie, it's them coming back as adults, and then there's, and we, but we know that there's flashbacks because Nick Hamilton is that that's the bully. Yeah, so who's a mythical beast? Uh, Nick Hamilton. Uh, Shout fan, out to Nick, fan of the show, mythical beast. Uh, Australian uh, plays played the bully, just a complete, just horribly, awesomely horrible guy in uh, it. 
uh, he's 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 reached out to us, and we were gonna we were gonna actually spend some time with him when we went to Australia. But he was in Melbourne. Guess what? He was filming it too, it chapter two, and he couldn't be there. Uh, so we know he's in it. Hopefully, he doesn't get cut. <laughs> Uh, no, but Nick's a great guy. We hope uh, to actually meet at some point. Maybe have him on the show. But you say he's a great guy. He is because he, because he likes us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got great taste, and that <laughs> usually that usually right. translates and to great character. His his um his Twitter messages were very amicable. Yeah. So that's that's enough for us to believe he's a great I think guy. I do believe. In he order is. to play a character that evil that well, I think you actually have to be very good as a, a, a you know morally as a person. Um. Anyway, uh, the kids, the gr- the grownups in the movie, the grown up kids played by James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, Jay Ryan, Bill Hader, Bill Hader's in it. Isaiah Mustafa, the Old Spice guy, is yes. in it. I met him in a yeah. in a in a sports attic or some sort of shop that sells shoes and talk to him. Talk to him uh, about shoes. I think. Oh, just about shoes. You yeah. didn't say you're not on a horse or anything like that, right? Uh, James, we've, we've met both Old Spice men. Met Terry Crews, met Terry Crews as well. Yeah, uh, James Ransom and Andy Bean. Uh, anyway, I'm super excited about it. Again, it's the kind of thing that I'll definitely see that. It's difficult to imagine it being as good as the first one. I, it's easier than the, but it, it is easy because it's, it's the second half of a story. It's the second half of a story. Yeah, right. Um, I already said it, man. I said it was horrible. I said that the the 1990 version was horrible. Now, it was, let it's not even watchable. It's garbage. Let me tell you. Speaking of not garbage, okay. Speaking of. <laughs> Amazing news this year. Tyler Perry's A Medea Family <laughs> Funeral comes out. Wow. And this is the last, and it will be the 10th Medea movie. I was going to get you to guess, but then I forgot. The would tenth. you have guessed the 10th Medea movie? I would have said the 15th. No, you. I, I would have said, really? d- definitely said double digits. Definitely. I was surprised. So it's the 10th, and he said that it is the last one. Um, uh, I don't know if she dies, but I do know I'm not gonna see it. <laughs> I'm just gonna be very, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it coming out though. It's just like he needs to put it to bed. Have you ever watched one? I haven't. Maybe that's the problem. You know what, you know what we need to do? A, th- a marathon. We need, we need to, we need to catch marathon. up. We need to catch up so I can, we can get on the Medea train. Let's watch nine movies in one sitting and just wear like bags that we pee in. Hold on. Like literally not get up the whole hold, time. Hold on. Uh, I film the whole I'm thing. I'm legitimately getting excited about this, so watch out. I think that we should. Rhett and Link's Medea Marathon. We should watch every, we should make it into an event where we watch all nine. Oh my gosh, hold this on. is crazy. But seriously, we cannot get up. No, we, I'm no, not, no, no, I'm not doing no, you that. You have to pee into a stadium not, pal, the bag. No, I, no I'm you not. You have to put on the external catheter. That's not catheter. healthy. I, I don't wanna do anything that's gonna cause me lasting well, physical damage. One of the things I was gonna tell you about, I was gonna save it for my personal section, but I'll go ahead and say it. I'm thinking about wearing one to work in 2019 because I, I keep having to get up from meetings to pee and I'm having to pee more often as I get older. And so I was just like, I'm gonna wear the freaking thing that I can just pee right into a bag. I feel like this idea makes it worse, but let, let's have a constructive brainstorming moment here. And hashtag Ear Biscuits, let us know. I mean, I, th- I think this is can be a seminal, mythical moment for 2019, leading up to the Medea premiere, which we are going to attend in person, but we will come straight from having watched <laughs> all nine, like how, all nine back to 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 back. That's got to be at least eighteen hours. Yes, and we're gonna we're gonna be sleep deprived. We're gonna be nutty, mm. and you apparently will have not have stayed in one place. That's fine for you, man. Like live your world. No, I'm not gonna crap in a bag. <laughs> I, I'll get up for that. Let's not let's not leave this. Let's leave it for now, but let's not leave this idea, okay? Okay, but. We're uh, gonna catch up. Tyler Perry has to acknowledge this though. I'm not doing it if he doesn't acknowledge it. It's not that I'm happy that it's over. I was just making a joke at 
the Medea series expense, but it's really that I've never watched any of them, and so why would I start with the tenth one? And we're I've, gonna solve I've that. I've watched bits and pieces of the ones that have been on television, and I always find them funny. You have to go into a certain mode and sort of say that that this is the type of comedy. You know, it's it's it's. There's uh, a reason why he's made ten. Yeah, I, I, and once you kind of say this is not supposed to be some like super art house art sophisticated this is just this is low hanging fruit humor man and it's really funny okay and it's almost sophisticated in how unsophisticated broad, how broad it, is. it is you know so speaking of catch up let's move to television and i'm just going to throw out two things here stranger things 3 is coming out excited about that um uh, i never watched all of season two. Oh, well then that says something about how excited you are about season three. Um, my family left me in the dust and I never went back so I gotta go back and watch season two I think before I can watch season three but maybe not. But like oh that person's still here, not dead, okay. Just watch the recap man. Okay. Just watch the re season recap. Uh, Speaking of catch up, I do have one more. Okay, I've got a, a TV show I'm very excited about but go ahead. Game of Thrones they have announced that probably beginning March, April, probably be more specific by the time this comes out, season eight, which is the final season, the final six episodes of Game of Thrones are coming out. That's that's pretty huge. I mean, that's, I mean, that's like a cultural phenomenon coming to a close. And I just checked before I came in here because I could, I don't know where I'm at in the series, and I'm a episode two of season five. So I think I'm in trouble here because once, I, I, there's no way I can catch up before they start to come out and that's really what you need to do because at the rate I'm going, it'll be like another year from now and I'll finally be, at the very earliest I'll be caught up. I mean it was it was this time last year that I started season one, I went through five seasons so um, it took me a whole year. And I'm in it. I'm you're all, further back I'm than only that. Like season three. You basically gave. You're all. You're done. I. Uh, you're never gonna go back to it. I read all the books, and then I, I. That made it a very satisfying experience for me to watch what I've watched. But my point is, once it's done and it's all in the can, uh, I did. I just. I don't think I'll be motivated to to keep watching. But I would love to be able to catch up and then be a part of the 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 cultural conversation. I just don't think I can do it unless. It's all I do, and I and I, I I make use of that pee bag you're talking about. There's no way that you can catch up in time, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't eventually watch it. I just don't think practically I will. You'll so get now to I'm, it if you're still going at a at a snail's pace right now. It's it will never end. I but mean, there's a motivation in one when, sense, this when is there's great. still fresh episodes coming out. It's a it's a motivation to keep trying to catch up. Do you think this, this is, is like the same? Is this, is this a personality this is thing a, with me? Yeah, this is a flaw. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, to me, this is the same argument that I got into with my son about watching uh, recorded sports events. And so it, I would say, don't tell me the score and don't watch it and don't look on the internet because when we get home, we're gonna watch said game. What if it's the Super Bowl though? I mean, the Super Bowl is a different thing because I'm not interested. I don't care about the results of the Super Bowl. I just well, watch the Super Bowl because it's a cultural phenomenon. What but if I'm the, saying it's what like if, what an if NC did, State game. But what if you did? I think it needs to be the Super Bowl plus you cared about the results because that's really that captures more of the cultural phenomenon of how they're going to end this whole thing, how they're going to wrap it up. Like if you're talking about the inevitability of it being spoiled for you just by being a part of conversations in Los Angeles, that's a different thing. But I'm talking about that's not what you said. What you said was is that you're looking for motivation and knowing that it was still going gave you motivation, which is again, back to my argument. Yeah, is my and son is, said he didn't want to watch the game because it had already happened. And I was like, well, technically what you're seeing on screen has already happened. There's a very small delay. Does that mean that it's <laughs> not, you, just because you're not there, but the experience no, I is think the same. It, it's not the same because you factor in the cultural component of even if it's just sh talking with one person about it. Yeah, like I wouldn't say, say. Oh yeah, you remember that game that you watched two weeks ago? Okay. I watched it today, let's talk about it. Okay. I don't really wanna well, talk okay. about it. Well okay, all right, so maybe you got a point because if I saved, let's say I saved. Maybe. Like yeah. a State Carolina game 
that takes, the, what if I s decided to skip watching like a State Carolina game, which is a game that I care about the outcome of, um, and I skip the one in 2019, one of their games in 2019, and I save it for like 2023. At that point, I'm not invested because it has no impact on the current proceedings of the season and the standings and the, the is different players. So I watched Mad Men. It, it, maybe maybe that makes sense. I watched Mad Men totally late, and it was one but of my favorite story. shows. It's and a it was story, amazing. Though. But I missed out on an added component that I think the social component. Yeah, and. But I did get through Mad Men. But didn't you want to see but, the end of the story? Yes. So that's different. So, and then for, but I'll never watch The Sopranos. So I, I don't know, it kind of goes both ways. It's no, like, no, you might. I won't. No, no, I'm saying. I will never watch this. I tried, I, I started. And I, I was like, no, I have no one to talk to about this to help keep me going. Well, I, what if I started watching it? We, we, but Sopranos buddies. Is that our thing, you and me, the Sopranos? Yeah, I, like when we're in a retirement center, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm talking like, when we've got a lot of time, but you're gonna be looking for stuff to binge, man. It's gonna feel like watching a silent film at that point if I live as long as I hope to live. Uh, TV that I am incredibly excited about, which we have a, uh, a fun little story <laughs> about this one. So you may remember, I've talked about it before, I talked about it on the internet, uh, 2014 movie called What We Do in the Shadows, which was, oh, yeah. um, it had uh, Jemaine Clement from Flight of the Concords and Taika Waititi, uh, New Zealand based director who directed Thor, that's what he's known for, but uh, he did a lot of amazing work before that, continues to do incredible stuff. They were actually both, they, they created and were uh, starred in this movie, which was a vampire mockumentary, which was just, I. I remember tweeting about how it was, but when I watched it, it was my favorite movie of 2014 so far. Maybe my favorite movie of 2014. And again, it was one of those things. It's just like, first of all, these guys are funny. I find everything that that sort of loose group of New Zealanders uh, do kiwis. Those kiwis are incredibly funny. Like I love yeah it's their a, sense of it's humor. a specific dryness. Um, and they're just it's like a friendly dryness. I, it's I, like I just. And they just, I just. Take a British dryness, but then you make it happy. It's one of those things where every once in a while you like see guys who are doing something and you kind of know that they're, they work together and they're friends and I'm just like, man, I would like to be friends with those guys. The movie had a very labor of love quality and I know that like all the sketches and things, they, one of them did themselves and it was just like, is very unnecessary but very labor of lovish. Well and not, it was just, Cool. It was hilarious, and it was not something when you. Some, it was a mockumentary. It's like you would have thought, oh, you can't do those anymore. Like they're done. Mockumentaries are done. Old, played out. No, it wasn't. It was incredibly funny, and they are bringing that show, that movie, back to life as a television show on FX uh, that premieres spring of this year, twenty nineteen. Now, there's a few things that are different. First of all, Jermaine and um, Taika are involved. In fact, the way we found out about this before it was public was we actually met uh, a PR rep, rep from FX who I was like, we were talking about FX and how much we love FX and all the shows on there and mm -hmm. she said, well, have you heard of what we do in the shadows? I was like, yes. And she was like, it's gonna be a television show. Uh, and the inside information that I got at the time, which is probably public at this point, is that Taika was directing and Jermaine was show running, so basically they are very involved creatively. But a few things to note, um, it's not the same group of people, it's a different time, different place. It takes are there place still in shadows? It's still very shadowy. Are takes, there vampires? I believe so. It takes place in New York, specifically Staten Island and other boroughs. <laughs> okay. Um, why do you need other boroughs if you got Staten Island? Uh, all new lead, lead characters, so nobody from the movie, not just actors, but I think it's actually different characters is was my understanding of that. Uh, so, uh, and Paul Sims, who's the, the, you know, the guy who collaborated with Flight of the Concords for their television show and also is a producer on Atlanta is producing it. Oh. So we're talking about a dude who, they're just the people involved are so talented that it just feels like it has to work and it has to be great. And then Doug Jones, who played the amphibian man in uh, The Shape of Water, he's one of the actors in it. Oh, really? I don't know if he plays an amphibian, but um, 
I think he's got I think he's got range. I think he can do not amphibious work. Uh, anyway, t- sometime in 2019, that is the television that I am extremely excited about. Yeah, I'll, and I'll be I'll be catching up. I'll just be over here doing my catch up. Um, shall we shift to music? We shall shift. Um, there's not a place, there's not a de- repository on the internet that has a reliable, these are albums that are coming out. There's like a wiki entry, but it it's very. It's too comprehensive to be useful. Well, the first thing is it's not related to a new album coming out because that that's the thing that I looked at and I didn't you know I, I didn't ha- I didn't find anything specifically that I was too excited about honestly. Okay, I got something that's notable, but oh okay, but I'll get um, to it. Rolling Stones they're doing a tour. How do I know about this? Am I a huge Rolling Stone fan? No, I really like the album Tattoo You mm-hmm. specifically the B side. I'm just waiting on a friend. And Slave, the, and the reason you like that is because I happened to order it on BMG, BMG way back in the day. That's I don't know why that's the Rolling Stone album you got. I'm glad it was Rolling Stones. I've album. listened to a, a, a that was their, and we loved it. To me, that was like their sweet spot of that, um, like funk rock thing that they were doing. That I don't know what the BPMs were, but they're a little bit slower. Yeah, well, it has the, it has the one. This, there was one like the one big hit on it. I can't even remember which one it was, but it's. It wasn't satisfaction, but it was basically like the one that if you don't know the Rolling Stones, you still know it. But then it's I the, think it's the first song on the album, which I again I usually listen to the B side as well. But I'm going to their their show at the Rose Bowl because Britton texted me and he was like, "Rolling Stones coming to the Rose Bowl, let's do it." I'm like, I don't want to be a fart on a log, and so I just sat on the text a little bit, and I'm like, "Well, when is it?" And, yeah. Start me up. That's Start it. me up with the. Well, you know what? This and is, then I'm like, yes, let's do it. Now I'm excited about it. Well, but th- let me give you a couple of pointers. Having been to a show at the Rose Bowl in a very similar situation when Mike Edwards came into town, and he's a big U2 fan, and I'm not not a U2 fan, but I am. I understand and appreciate right. what they've done, and there's some songs that I like, but I'm not like. Yeah. You know. Do I need to listen to the Rolling Stones and like really become like a super fan? Well, what I was gonna I say, can do that. what I was gonna say is, you need to, you need to talk to some people and get and try to get down in the little area next to the stage, which. Uh, what do you mean? You, you, you pull, you know, you pull some strings. You talk to some people or take advantage of some things, you know. Oh, and like uh, say I'm internet famous and get like a. Backstage pass? Well, you're not gonna get a backstage pass. To, not to the Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger's not gonna let you within a hundred feet of him. <laughs> but I'm saying you can get into the into the VIP area oh. and be. I was uh, at the U2 concert. I was like right next to the little keystone thing that Bono comes out on. Did you do that instead of getting a seat? I already had tickets. I already have tickets. And then I was like, ah, you know what I should do? I should figure out if I could get something, some special. When first of all, well, maybe I shouldn't have got. No, no, no. First of all, when you call who you need to call in order to try to get the thing we're talking about, you gotta talk like this. You gotta, hey, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stuck up. The you gotta make them think that they're not actually doing anything for you, and it usually works. And you could get great seats. So, and so you'll be standing. You can get Mick Jagger sweat on your face. Never wash again. Now, but here's what. But here's the other thing. But I'll be doing some. Do research. not drive. Do not drive. Okay. All right. Do not drive Boy, to the Rose Bowl. Is, this is getting titillating, isn't it? Because don't drive to the Rose Bowl. You know how long I, Mike, and I stayed in my car after the U two concert, waiting to leave. An hour. Ninety minutes before we moved. Oh wow. So unless you've got a book on tape, or you just want to go deep in a conversation with Britain, you need to. Find, get a helicopter. You so, know, so call, <laughs> call from people and get a helicopter, right? And just drop it right into the <laughs> VIP. Right. You know, pull you right out with a helicopter. So let me get this straight. When the show was over, you went back to the car and then you started up, <laughs> but then you couldn't get no Exit. satisfaction. Yeah, motion. Uh, music I'm not excited about, but I, I know a lot of people are. There are four albums coming out from from bands that some of you may like. Tesla, first of all, Tesla is, is a band, not just a brand. <laughs> Megadeth, Skid Row, and Whitesnake. 
hair metal bands all just decided wow. 2019 is the year of hair metal. It's back. It's something and as about bad as ever. Something about their age and their their fan their sweet spot of their fans' age. It's got to have something to do with that. It doesn't have anything to do with me. I will say that. Yeah, I will not be partaking unless Britain drags me to some of that too. I don't know. I don't think he's into that. Uh, it's a. It's funny because. This is not, I mean, first of all, there are people who would be like, you know, you can't put Megadeth and White Snake in the same category. I understand that there's probably, that's probably faux pas for metalheads. Um, yeah. But I just don't know anything about it and I don't have any desire to. But um, I appreciate it again. And I well, actually, here, here's something you're gonna appreciate. If they came to the Rose Bowl and I could go into the VIP session, I might do it. <laughs> you would? No, you would. <laughs> I would not. But here's one: new album coming out from Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie teamed back up with the Blowfish. You know, he had a. He's country now. A, he was country. He still is country. I know his name is is Darius Rucker, but he's always gonna be Hootie to me, and he never was to anybody officially, but he's teaming back up with his people. Did you know? With that, the Blowfish. Did you know that Darius Rucker did a song with Lionel? Do you know that Lionel did an album called Tuskegee? Yeah. That was a yeah, collaboration yeah. with a bunch of country artists in yeah. like 2016? I don't re listen to Lionel now, I listen to the Lionel that was this, the sweet sweet spot Lionel. Uh, well, he's, he does, a, he does a duet with Rascal Flatts too on that, which was, which uh, it, that wasn't one of my favorite songs, but and it's, you know, when when people like Lionel uh, do things in the present day, sometimes it has, especially when they're collaborating with country stars, the polish is it's over polished, yeah, to the point that you feel like it loses a little bit of soul. But yeah. there are some, there are some really, really good songs. Uh, in fact, I think you're showing. I think you're, does you're he not, do, who you're does showing he, your dadness? No, here too much. What this does is, he? There's do, nothing legit about this. Hold on. There, you haven't listened to it. You can't judge it, man. I'm saying it's. Gr I'm. I'm sure it's great. What does he do with Darius Rucker? What song does he do Why with Darius? Are you, so you're. you're what you're telling me is you're going to the Hootie and the Blowfish. You know, you're waiting in the line for their album. To Darius come out. and that's kind of it. All goes together. So yeah, they did "Stuck on You" together, and the har harmonies are great. I'm sure it's great. It's you need to listen. It's to just it. not relevant. Why do I care about that? Okay, that's good. For, good I care about you. what sticks to my soul, man. And Lionel and Darius Rucker singing "Stuck I, on I You" sticks I don't, to my soul. I don't like artists covering their own material decades later. Period. Period. If it's if it you know easy like Sunday morning, leave it on that Sunday morning. Don't give me the updated version. As for Merle, you know. Any, it just doesn't work. It's, it's, it, there's mm -hmm. a sadness to it. Even if it sounds great, I'm like, I'm relieved that Lionel's duet with Hootie sounds good, but, and I, I think he's still got it, but I don't want him to cover his, his old songs 20 years later. And here's the thing that I hated, that with streaming music, it, it, they, can, they can still sneak it in there, but they, it, I, don't, I think the industry doesn't allow for it as much anymore. I hope I'm right about this. Because it, when an you get act, the remake when an and you act don't know it. will will release an album of their greatest hits, but it they they've covered their own songs so that they can it's something about how they can make money off of it. But it's the it's the artist covering their own song decades later. And That's you can different. Tell they're like That's a ragged different category. voiced. That's different. I hate that. I hate that as well. And then but people that's are like, different. let me listen to like, oh, you you like Lionel? Let me listen to some Lionel. And they're going on Spotify and they're listening to like 2016 Lionel with Hootie. Do you know who Lionel? And they get a totally wrong impression of how amazing it is. But do you know who Lionel sings easy with on the album? Alabama. Willie Nelson, Willie, man. Well, okay. Okay, you, this is. Willie Nelson hold on, is but, an hold exception. That's different though. Oh my gosh, I just realized I had a dream about Willie Nelson last night. There it you go. It was you and me, we were sitting, we were sitting somewhere like on bleachers. I was sitting here, you were on my left, and then I was looking at you, and then I leaned forward, and who was there? Easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> Willie, <laughs> Willie Nelson. <laughs> Willie Nelson was like just on the other oh. side of, he was that, I could have reached out and touched him if you weren't in the way. Amazing. And you know what? Easy like Sunday morning. You know what I, you know what I did? I leaned over into your ear and I said, 
He's a good looking man. Well, he's still got it. That's not what he's known for. He I mean, He's really held up well. Those are the three things I said. He like, got old early, that's why he held up he well. Got he got old looked, early. He looked old at 30. That's the I, great thing about he's getting attractive. old early. I'm not saying he's attractive, I'm saying he's a good, he looks good. And he, he sounds good because he also sounded old early. Just like Chris Christopherson, if you sound old early, you thrilling. can sound great forever. It was thrilling okay. to be that close to you, Mr. Nelson, in a dream. And the reason why I have the dream is because we have a urinal on the other side. And when you're peeing in that urinal, right above the urinal, there is a that's my picture. A portrait of my, Willie Nelson staring you right in the face. My wife got me that, and um, and it and I didn't have a place to put it up inside your house, uh, my house, because it was she was thinking that we would put it up in the office, and then she just put it up over one of the urinals. I mean, nothing. I don't mind Willie watching me pee. Nothing makes me relax my prostate like staring deep into the eye holes of Willie Nelson. Willie can watch me in my Willie anytime. Um. Willie. Let's but, move on to technology, why don't we? Let's do it. Tesla. 5G is coming. What does this mean? I've, I've heard about this, I'm like, you and know. And I'm not talking about when you're on your Wi-Fi and it's like there's a 5G option. Right. That's bull crap, It's man. like you got two different bands on your router and no one ever tells you That's which different. one you're supposed to connect to. 5G is the fifth generation. You're making me angry. I think you're, you're just really, you've, you've, you've peed in my. Peed in your grits? In my cornflakes. <laughs> uh, Some of your cornflake has gotten in my bowl. 5G is the fifth generation of mobile, of wireless technology, okay? So obviously you remember 3G and then it turned into 4G slash LTE and you remember the jump you probably don't, but if you don't remember the jump from 3G to 4G, no. it basically went from forget about ever watching a video on your phone to oh, I'm watching video on my yeah, phone. Yeah. Okay, it, and you 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 forget that, and sometimes if you're if you're out and about and you, which is definitely the case in Los Angeles because of the mountains and the weirdness, um, you can suddenly find yourself in a 3G spot and it's almost like you don't even have a phone anymore. I mean, you might be able to text, you can have a conversation, but you're not gonna go, you're not gonna use any data. You only have what used to be a phone. Right. The step from 4G to 5G will be as significant or more significant. So what am I gonna experience? Because if it's not video, streaming video. Well, first of all, you're gonna, the, the internet connection will be 10 times as fast. Okay, 10 times as fast as LTE. Latency will be reduced to a millisecond. It will be uh, it will be unnoticeable. So uh, basically this means a whole lot that as, I'm not an expert on this, but I can read articles and tell you what they say. Um, essentially, for the, it's gonna do a number of things. This is sort of the beginning of the end of there being a point of reference for things taking time over the internet, okay? So we still live in a world in which we wait for things. We see something spinning on Netflix to load, et cetera, and this kind of thing. But this is the beginning of there being wirelessly in the air, broadcast everywhere, accessible to any device that can tap into it, not waiting for anything. Now, of course, it's technology. It's gonna screw up. You're gonna get frustrated with it, just like any technology. Or, but this or is people the... will start making things like, now we're gonna start streaming 3D environments, but you're gonna you, you're gonna feel like you can't live without it, and then you're gonna be frustrated with it loading. Well, loading is. And I don't mean three like a holograms. Well, you're, no, gonna, okay, you're gonna stream no, holograms. No, so actually, so uh, holograms, not so much, but AR. So augmented reality, virtual reality, the fact that we're gonna get down to wireless laten latency being so small, you're not gonna have to have a console to experience. Because uh, basically you have to have a real world device. You've gotta have like a phone that you're putting into a device. You've gotta have gla Google Glasses. You've gotta have something that's on your person that isn't tethered to something in order to really be immersed into the world of like to bring augmented reality to our world, we have to have something that is out and about and is everywhere. Is I can take it to the grocery store. It's gonna change the way I interact with everything. 5G 
is the beginning of that happening. It's like the, the things are kind of settling, and sh but there it, it will be that significant. Also, uh, any technology that like car, like self-driving cars, like autonomous cars, being able to communicate with each other and communicate with the internet in a way that's fast enough for them to like be reliably kind of dependent upon this like interconnected uh, network. It's that that's going to happen with five G, and it's being rolled out. And actually, there's a it's being rolled out in a number of cities. It depends on who your carrier is. Uh, but it, you, basically you're also gonna not have to have a cable coming into your house. You're gonna have, you're gonna have a wireless uh, modem that captures the 5G and then that modem is, your, your local Wi-Fi is gonna be broadcast around your house into your television and all this stuff. You're not gonna be drilling holes into your house. The cable guy's not gonna come out and have to go and be like, well a tree limb fell on your cable and you're screwed. That's not gonna happen because it's all gonna be wireless. Five G, man. Welcome to the freaking future. Um, the thing I found in was in selected cities, Elon Musk is gonna be sending people uh, into space and to the International Space Station on his space shuttle, the Dragon. Boeing's working on one too that they're supposed to have out, and there's there's been some unmanned. Well, right now our our astronauts have to hitch a ride on the Russian uh, shuttles to get to the International Space Station. Mm. So uh, NASA has contracted with SpaceX and Boeing to to have our own shuttle system. Well how hard do you think it would happen. be for us to work out doing our Medea, reun our Re Medea Marathon at the International Space Station? On the way, well it's gonna be much easier this year. Uh, Elon, if you're watching, uh, I know you're a fan, um, if you would like us to have our Medea Marathon on the International Space Station, if you feel like you can pull the right strings, we're talking a voice we're like this, we'll like yeah, we, we will do it. Stage. We'll I'll pee, right next to the I'll pee in a bag. Station. I'll pee out in the open. Your pee just turns into a yellow ball in space. Right. And then you can catch it, it like an apple with a net. Um, so whatever, whatever you want, whatever it takes. Um, Tyler Perry doesn't even have to be there if we can do it all on the International Space Station. Um, Elon Musk's cars will have will, will will be playing the new Tesla album only. <laughs> they've got, they've got, they've worked out a deal. No, they will. Um, they should work out a deal first of all. Um, he he tweeted this around Halloween of last year, but um, that uh, a Tesla will be able to drive around a parking lot and find an empty spot, read signs to confirm it's valid, and park. That's helpful. And illegal. You know, I mean, there's too many, on a state level, they have to create laws in terms of like self driving laws. cars and stuff like that. Laws it's so are for annoying. losers. Um, you know, so it's like a, the, the valet. So it's just one more thing that's like tempting me. It's like, well, maybe I need to get one of those Teslas. Maybe you do, man. You ought to get one. Splurge a little bit. Splurge. I just can't bring myself to something like that. I don't know, maybe. Um, Jazzercise is going to be celebrating 50 years. Oh, now we come to it, the good stuff. I don't even exactly know what Jazzercise is because I'm picturing like Jane Fonda leotards, my mom used to take me to the church fellowship hall and I'd have to sit in the corner and like color while she was jumping around and with like leg warmers well, on. She was probably doing Jazzercise. But she was doing the like church version well, and Amy a, Grant was involved. It's a, It's a system, it's a franchise. Well, I don't know if they do it at churches, maybe they do. But it is a franchise. They have fifty fran years, though. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this because when I found is this it the out, same? Is Jane Fonda excited? Is Jane Fonda part She's of Jazzercise? Part of, I do not believe so. It was it was started by some woman named like Shepherd Missit or something like that. Okay. Um, so it was started in 1969, hence fifty years ago. Uh, this is crazy. By 1984, Jazzercise was declared the second fastest growing franchise behind Domino's Pizza. Did you know this was happening you in gotta, the 80s? You've gotta license it to, to do it. Today, the company boasts 8,300 franchises in 32 countries and earns roughly $100 million per year. There's 200,000 customers dancing and sweating to jazzercise choreography each year. Um, millions of lives, um, I, this, this is like the press release. This from, is from, them, from this Market is what Watch. they wrote. Yeah, well, it's, it's all true. You think Jazzercise is gonna lie to you? 
Millions of lives have been touched during the company's 50 year history. Jazzercise, now this is where my ears, this is where my thighs started perking up. <laughs> jazzercise will celebrate the golden it's anniversary. The body part. With a, your thighs work in jazz? They don't perk up though. Mine do. You wanna see my thighs perk up? There are things that can get perky, but the thighs aren't two of them. Jazzercise will celebrate the golden anniversary with a two-day international convention and party June 28th through 29th, 2019 at the San Diego Convention Center in San Diego. Over 2,000 people will attend the event that will be filled with dance fitness classes, live entertainment, international guest performers, surprise announcements, and big reveals about the brand's future. We gotta play Jazzercise. Guest performers? We gotta play Jazzercise. What if we could play Jazzercise, do a concert at Jazzercise, 50th golden anniversary, and do the Medea Marathon there. This is gonna be a big year for us. Clear your calendar, Link. My thighs are gonna be so perky on June 28th and 29th. I mean, we-, we Line up and see him jump. The thing that we are doing is creating more tour dates for- I Just uh, added one right now. Our music and concert extravaganza. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mean to turn this into an announcement, but yes, we're, we're gonna be at Jazzercise, San Diego. Well, we have, we've gotta work now, out the details. Well, we're gonna be in London next month, February, um, for, in, in association with VidCon, we have our own concert, uh, retinlinklive.com, check on tickets for that. In April, we're gonna be in Nashville, St. Louis, and Columbus and the uh, DC, Maryland area, so that's four shows. Um, the national show is gonna be at the Ryman, which pretty, was- the, Pretty exciting. The, the the birthplace of the Grand Ole Opry, which of course then moved, but like that's the original stage, man. I'm so excited. Yeah. Redlinglive.com, if you wanna come see us, that, I mean, I- Bringing it in I, I'm 2019. Not, I'm not just trying to make this a plug, I think that that's a, a big thing I'm looking forward to in 2019 that we haven't been able to talk about is like specific tour dates and again we're still, we're looking to do some more. Writing music for it, new music coming. Yeah. What about personally, let's get to some things that we're looking forward to personally. Um, I'm doing something I've never done before in 2019. This is ambitious, man. When you first told me about this I was like, whoa. Really? When I looked at the price tag, I was you like, gonna do whoa. This? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do this? I am doing it, I booked it today as a matter of fact. So I am taking the McLaughlins, or should I say the McLaughlins to Scotland. Uh, I have been- And, and how, many, how many McLaughlins are we talking about? Uh, 12. How big is the clan? 12. 12 people. Okay, so here's the deal. I've been thinking about doing this for a while. I always thought that it would be an unforgettable experience to take all the people that I know and love with the last name McLaughlin to the motherland. And um, but you did you tell any of them that? No, I told them when I was I knew I was going to do it. Yeah, I, it was in your mind, but you didn't tell them. One day, I hope to take you to Scotland. Uh, no, I've never said that. I've only thought it. And I, first of all, they're very excited. How did you tell him? Was it, this was like a, this is like a gender reveal or something. Well, it's like you gotta make a big deal out of it. Um, I just thought that, that I shouldn't do that. I didn't wanna make a big, I wanted yeah, to make the Look big, at what I'm doing. I wanted to make the big yeah. to do, just the going. Okay, that's admirable. So I just told him when I was home, I, I told him when I was home for the state fair, uh, you know, in October, and they were all very excited. I, Cause I was like, you don't know if they're gonna be able to do it, you don't know what their schedules are, it has to work out with when we're gonna be able to be getting away. So anyway, so this is, this is who I'm taking. I'm taking, of course, my family, that's four people. I'm taking my parents, that makes six, and I'm taking my brother and his wife and their four children. So there's 12 of us all together. And we are putting together the itinerary right now. Now I've never traced my family back specifically, but you just, I've done a little bit of like the ancestry uh, thing and it kind of gets a little murky like around the 1700s. We don't go back very far. Uh, we, it, it seems that 
like both sides of the family come from like poor farmers that didn't really have any way, like di you know, you had to, you had to be of a certain class in order to kind of get traced back. I'm sure I could do it if I did a little bit more research. But anyway, because our last name is McLaughlin, McLaughlin is probably what I should start saying. We do know that McLaughlin is a derivative of McLaughlin. Uh, basically, they it becomes like M C L A C H L A N, and then we know that McLaughlin is a derivative of Lachlan. And so the lock, because the, you know they would add the MCs because there was some sort of family dispute or whatever. Anyway, the Lachlan clan still exists, still has a chief. A chief? Yeah, a chieftain, whatever they call him. And there's the old ruin. Basically, you've got the old Lachlan castle, which is on a lock in Scotland. And then you've got the new Lachlan castle, which is where the chief still lives. So hey, does everybody pay dues? I mean. What, there's, it's, it's a castle? It's not a homeowner's association. Well, it's just how does a it? Family. So is it a castle? It's like a hotel now. There's like a hotel and a restaurant there, I think. But I, I, I think that, I think a lot of, uh, the, the heritage goes way back, you know, in, 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 in uh, the British Isles. And so I think that there are plenty of families that still have some sort of structure intact. And, you know, you've got your, uh, I don't even. I'm so. I'm so bad. I don't know that you've got like your family shield or whatever you call it. Which I'm. I'm gonna know all these. You got terms. time to figure it out. You're not going next month. You're going later. No. Or something. And, and I. And I. Uh, I'm planning the ins and outs of what we're gonna do. But we hope to like meet the chief. And I'm gonna submit. You know my application to take his place when he passes, so I can live in a castle in Scotland. Uh, uh, and um, I don't think the central air and heating is great in those things. Oh, okay. Well, I might have you to rethink wanna, it. You might want to check. You get a tour first I mean, before you bend the knee. We could do the Medea. We could do the Medea marathon there. I okay. could bring you. I don't know what kind of internet. I don't know if they got five G. <laughs> but anyway, that, I'm gonna, I'm that's gonna a, hang back. Super ambitious. I'm let you have a family thing. Uh, it it it's a little intimidating. There's, hole, there's holes in castles, and you you squat down and you dump in them, and then it goes down into the moat. It, I just, it just runs down the side of the castle. That's how those things work. I think they have plumbing. I The reason I decided to do it is because my oldest nephew is turning 18 this year and you know he's gonna be off at college and it's like, this is like the last time when we're all kinda all living as intact families to go off and take over the Scottish countryside. Yeah, if, I mean if he, if he, uh, you know, partners up and starts having kids, that's that's more people you gotta take. Yeah, I'm not doing that. You gotta get it over with before they start procreating. Uh, so anyway. The next generation of McLaughlin. I'm looking forward to that. I wanna make some memories, man. That's cool, I commend you on that. I can, you know, it, with you taking a vacation like that, it means I gotta figure something out. Yeah, you do, <laughs> yeah. I think I just might, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe Scotland. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I do know that um, we're planning a trip for Lily's 16th birthday. We, we said, we had some friends who did this like one every year they have multiple kids and they're like, all right, a kid gets to decide what they're doing, they have like a special trip. And I'm like, for Lily's 16th, we're gonna give her one of those where it's like just us, just her, her mom and me are gonna go and do a special 16th, you know, something that she'll remember and make it special. Yeah. Anywhere she wants to go, which is kind of, oh, what's that gonna be? She wants to go to London. I think mm. because of all this Doctor Who and Harry Potter and all this stuff she's been into, she having never been there, she's always wanted to go and experience the life of London. Of course, so, I mean, I, I think I'm gonna end up, I, I, well, we're doing a show there, it's separate from that, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my share of London this year. Well. You know, and I'm gonna love it. After the, the I love you, London. After the McLaughlins leave Scotland, the 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 rest of the McLaughlins besides my little clan, uh, we're sticking around and we're driving across the United Kingdom countryside and towards London, and then ending in London. Okay, you're gonna get some London. So too. I'm gonna have to get London tips. Yeah, we both need some London tips, y'all. Hashtag ear biscuits. Lots to look forward to this year. Um, there's lots of other stuff we got in the works. Um, there's a big project we've been working on for a while that will 
I think in an, in a, in a few weeks we'll start teasing that out, but we can't yet talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but just be on the lookout for that. What are you looking forward good, to this year? This is a good start to the year. I'm feeling great about 2019. If you haven't made your resolutions, it's not too late. Or you don't make resolutions. Just just find things that other people are doing that you can look forward to. Yeah, like, what like, we did. like we did today. Like It can be a movie, it can be a little blip on your calendar. Yeah, make your resolution, I'm going to watch a movie that I wanna watch. And yeah. then you'll feel good about yourself. It's the little things. Set the bar low and jump right over it. All right. Also I wanted to say the video version of this um, is now living on another channel as mm-hmm. well as all video versions. Well, all Ear Biscuits, past, present, and future are gonna be at youtube.com slash Ear Biscuits. So all those old interviews from previous seasons, all that stuff, if you want the YouTube version and the video version, everything moving forward, that's where you need to subscribe. And if you can't spell biscuit like I can't, it's B-I-S-C-U-I-T. You can remember that because it's like. Biscuit. C-U-I-T. It's like a sentence. Biscuit. It's just like the way I remember how to spell school. It's S-C-H-O-O-L because school's not cool. (laughs) That's how I used to remember that. Not cool. Yeah, school's not cool. It doesn't have the word cool in it. It's got the word hool in it. School's hool. Broken the seal on a new year, man. Woo, we're already in it. Yep, there we go. Good, ow, just actually hurt myself. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.